What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Water Boy Podcast. Today it is episode 26. We got a packed episode. Didn't cover the NBA draft last time. Gonna be going over that this time. We got some MLB talk, got a little college football recruiting news, and we're gonna wrap it up with NFL, of course the meat and potatoes of the episode got some mlb in there i don't know if you said that yeah yeah we do we do have mlb okay. in there uh but real quick i just want to say help your water boys out okay if you're watching on youtube like and subscribe if you're listening on spotify or apple podcast download the pod give us five stars and personally for me i don't know about you but like when i like go out on a run because i like go out running a ton uh, whenever i'm out uh i love to listen to my podcast and you know sometimes in the areas i'm running Wi-Fi goes out and the podcast goes dead. And so for me, I always just love to download it. Just have it on your phone. It really doesn't take much data. And then you could just uninstall it immediately after listening to it. Very convenient. That's what I like to do. So that's what we suggest over at the Waterboy Pod. But yeah, anyway. Grant, Grant really likes running around just the block. Just a five-minute quick little run. Oh, you know, quick little sweat. Five minutes is plenty to get me sweating. Uh, yeah, that's all I need. Uh, that's all I want, really, uh, when it comes to a workout. But yeah, l- let's get into the episode. Okay, so for starters, um, we didn't go over the NBA draft last episode. Um, we had a lot of Yankees talk, so we never got to it. Yeah, we um, got a little derailed on the last one. Not <laughs> but so so speaking of of the last the last uh, not the last episode the, the the draft, the first thing that I want to say so so Paolo, the number one overall pick this year, went to the Orlando Magic. The last two, so I guess there's only other been two other first overall picks by the Atlanta Magic. Who both happen to be big men. Just want to throw it out there, but go on. All of the previous number one overall picks for the Orlando Magic, after their contract was up with the Magic, proceeded to go to the Los Angeles Lakers. So in five years, Lakers fans, prepare yourself for the Bonchero experience. Yeah, whether he's good or not uh, at the he time, will be he'll there. be on the Lakers. Uh, we can kind of just like write that in stone. Uh, if there's like a bet for that, that's definitely negative odds. But, you know, th- that's something you look out for and you see these trends and everything. And I heard rumors that Chet Holmgren purposely tanked his workout with the Magic so they wouldn't draft him. And I mean... I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to play for the Orlando Magic either. But I mean, you look at the the Thunder right now, compare that. I mean, it's not like the I mean the Thunder is definitely way more promising than the Magic. But I mean, it's not like Chet's competing for a look, championship right away. But Chet, very Chet, funny that Chet allegedly tanked his uh workout. Magic. Chet Holmgren is like one of the most like narcissistic players that I think the NBA has ever seen, and he's only been in it for what like four days. Yeah, so I, you know, he, I, I think uh, he's getting drafted out there. Uh, I think he was saying, well, this, I don't hate this comment, but he was like, who's the best player in the NBA? He's like me when I get drafted. No, like that, like I, I, re- I can respect that. Good like, answer. Yeah, yeah you're not going to, you're not going to say like, you want to like praise it's yourself. It's just, it's just going to be really funny when AD just drops 40 on his head the first time, they, like any power forward, like even Julius Randle might drop 40 on his head, like literally Dude, anybody. Ch- Chet, my, my favorite thing is I was, I, I had, uh, I think I he the, just, if he adds 30 pounds, then like, okay. Oh no, yeah. That might be, that, he, that, that might be, be better, but like, I think he has I was, good potential, but I was sitting, I was, I was driving to Chipotle the day after the draft okay. with my friend and my friend always has the radio on like for what, like he, he is one of the only people on planet earth A that pays for radio res- guy. No, no, planet he's, earth. he's. He is one of the only people on planet Earth that's our age and pays for Sirius XM radio. Okay. He pays for, for that's radio. That's a rare breed of... Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Um, yeah. But but not a bad thing, but just rare. Um, but anyway, so we were, we were driving and on the, on the sports channel, they started talking about Chet. And this one dude said... Yeah, you know what? Chet is like really physical. Like he he can, he's super durable. Like he can go and take the hits, put his body on the line. I'm sitting there. I'm like, so I've seen Chet play since high school. I've seen what this dude looks like. Uh, I don't think that your body can be built like that and sustain itself over a long period of time with heavy contact. Like that's like putting KD in the NFL. 
Uh, uh, real quick, your your shirt's kind of explained, but explain to the viewers real quick how you know Chet Holmgren a little bit. How you know? Yeah. Him so and, and, look, I don't I don't personally know Chet Holmgren. I've never no actually met him in person, but I I in in high school, obviously, I'm from Minneapolis. Some mutual contacts. I went to high school in Minneapolis, so um, a lot of my friends played basketball with uh, or against Chet, I should say, against and Chet Jaylen and, Suggs. and Jalen Suggs. I've met Jalen though. Um, and they always said that Chet was, of course we got, we got blown out by like, you know, 70 points, but they always said that Chet was just like a complete dick. Like they, they just, they were always like, Chet is just like one of the just crappiest people to play against. Like, it's just, he's just a complete asshole. And, And you know, sometimes you, you need an asshole sometimes like a like a jimmy butler a michael jordan like Kobe it's a Bryant. different kind some, some though it, but but the thing is now he's gotta he's gotta start proving it you know maybe look he, like maybe he becomes one of the best centers of all time who knows we'll there's a difference out, but. there's a difference between being a villain in the nba and just being a dick chet holmgren from you know people change since <laughs> high school but yeah, but chet holmgren you know, things change things could change he's but chet holmgren Chet Holmgren is just, as of right now, just a dick. All right. You know, we're going to stick by that. Chet Holmgren is an asshole. Uh, but, okay. Could be proof wrong. Yeah. But. Yeah. So, Palo 1 Magic, Chet 2 to OKC. Real quick, though, I kind of like this outlook for OKC. Like, no, they do have a... Filling all the pieces. Like, they got Shea. They got Giddy. Uh, got Chet. Uh, Lou Dort. Put him in the torture chamber. Uh, they have pieces, you know? Look. I mean, they 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 are very very young team, and they don't can, forget they, can they have like an eleven seed in the West next year. They have like fifteen first round picks over like the next four years. Oh, I think five years. Something so like that. we're going to get into the John Wall uh, get uh, joining the Clippers later, but just real quick, let's say the Clippers do not win a championship with this Paul George Kawhi core, and now uh, John Wall. If they don't win a championship, we're gonna look back at that Paul George Clippers trade as the one of the most lopsided trades in NBA history. If the Thunder keep on drafting well, well, the Thunder's picks that they they have right now are their own because they've been horrible. Yeah, I, I I honestly have no idea who they drafted with the Clipper pick, but uh, no, have they zero. might have not even had a Clipper pick this year because it's every other year for the. It might have been what might have been Giddy. Yeah, no, no, no. I think, well, I think Giddy was kind of early. I think that was there. Maybe I Giddy was like a second there. round player. I don't know. No, no, Giddy, Giddy was up there. But let's, whatever. Let's Reg- yeah. While you look that up, I just want to say, I kind of think OKC is kind of filling the pieces. Hey, m- maybe in five years. I mean, look at Memphis. They're a really young team. Like, if some, Gosh. I don't know who on their team, but maybe Chet can be like a John Morant type of score lead you in scoring and they have young guys around. Maybe someone else can emerge. I'm not saying it'll happen. I'm saying maybe. Okay, Dude, so Chet. Got a lot of outlook. I, Chet, I like it. I like Chet's going to be a boards guy. I don't like, I don't think that Chet Holmgren, like obviously he you shoots. can play him. I, I think he, he can shoots. develop into a, he should, like a 20 no, yeah. score. He, I think he, he definitely could. The, the big thing though is whether or not they want to play him at center or power four. He can dribble too. He can dribble. So like the thing is, like, if you put him at power four, well, if you can have to put him at center because he's like seven two. Well, yeah, but also <laughs> like KD, to. KD's like seven one, isn't he? Six eleven. Different. KD has a bag. Uh, no, I know, but but I mean, obvious. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is structurally wise, like physicality. Yeah, he's KD slim and Chet are, are the slim towers closest. So if I mean, if you can put some muscle on Chet too, especially no, yeah, having that center, he's got like a lot that's, of that's good. Yeah, he's an ass though, but he has potential. You know, sometimes. Yeah character yeah, we'll knock see. but hey jimmy butler isn't the nicest guy i'm i am surprised though there. that allegedly chet tanked the his his uh performance with the magic because he's always followed jalen literally everywhere he has but gone I, i'm just that just goes to show how bad the orlando magic organization is that he would rather skip playing with his former like teammate in high school his boy he, and call, he, well, no, he and wasn't being in the first pick in the draft. He, yeah, well, went to the same college, but yeah, didn't play together. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but he literally said, well, allegedly tanked his thing, said no to that, and wanted to go to OKC. I did hear a lot of reports from his camp 
whatever the hell that means that he wanted to go to OKC. But Dude, I think I understand like OKC from a basketball point is like they're up and coming, but like out of all the options for those top teams, like just location wise, I would much rather be in Houston. I'd much rather be in um, Orlando. Like, yeah, dude, yes. imagine, yeah. imagine the amount of just thinking career. And I think, no, I, yeah, obviously a great landing spot. Cause you know, also just for four words, we knew that. So just think fair. monetarily the amount of money that you would make off of being that number one overall pick to Orlando, because you have no income tax in Florida. I mean, all three places are pretty good. When, I, I'm not are sure they? Oklahoma's Oklahoma city's, I'm not sure what that is, but Texas is none. So, so that is Texas true. or Florida is a very good, like Loki, great landing spots for these boys. They got that full back. Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma's income tax is from zero to five percent. Okay, so full bags. <laughs> Top three picks, full bags. full bags. Fourth pick, screwed. And you're playing for the Kings. You get the Cali tax, and you're playing for Sacramento. Literally the Who's worst the King's possible coach? scenario. You can get no clue, no idea. It's not Luke Walton anymore. No, I could not tell you at all. Did they fire their coach this year? It's Mike Brown. I have never heard of a Mike Brown in my life. I think he was the Laker and or Cavs coach, maybe both. Um, teams coach. Let's see here. He's coached the Warriors, Cavs, Lakers, and Cavs. Okay, yeah. Okay. But yeah, no. okay, yeah. That's the outlook on that. You know, I, I do like what OKC is doing. I am a fan. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But, okay, let's go to – Jabari number, Smith, by the way. Is it Jabari Smith, right? Number three pick, Jabari Smith, going to Houston. And this was my first opinion. So, we're going to get into John Wall in a sec. But uh, Houston just bought out his whole contract, his $42 million max deal contract. They just bought it out. Uh, and the Clippers just got John Wall for, like, a minimum. Because like he got paid essentially because he got bought yeah, out like like crazy to think about uh but we're getting to that later but Jabari Smith Rockets they got Jalen Green uh I'm I'm a big fan of Kevin Porter Jr. I'm I'm just a USC guy so of course uh if he can get his act together yeah yeah but they have ball handlers and Jabari Smith isn't known as a ball hand- great shooter but like people are kind of labeling him as the catch and shoot guy. Uh, I loved Auburn last year. I had Auburn in my final four. That didn't turn out well. Uh, but yeah, uh, I loved Auburn a ton. Uh, Jabari Smith loved him. I thought like people were saying number one, Jabari Smith, like in February. And so they were still saying it. They were still saying it steam, like, you know, like what, two days, three days before the literally. No, no, no. Like it was people really had no, like the Palo was kind of a surprise to all of us. Like in like, yeah. in my opinion, like I thought that was a bit of a surprise to all of us, but uh, even though I do think Palo is the best, out, I do think Palo is the best out of all three of them. Uh, but Jabari, more I'm of a little, shoot guy, but I think that fits with their team because they have handles. They got, James I'm a little, James look, I'm a guy. little, I'm a little concerned about Palo Bonchero in the, at the NBA level, especially on the Orlando magic, because he kind of has like, like he is I just cool. think he'll be the only part of the team and like I don't care if he shoots 38% of the field like they might just let him shoot 20 times a well, game. Well the thing is is like <laughs> look Jalen Jalen Suggs is a ball handler. What who's their center? Mo Bamba like is it yeah. is it is it Mo is it um it used to be what, it's one of, so he's in the Bulls now. Uh yeah, I think it is Mo Bamba but it might like, be Mo Bamba. they're very young. Uh they got They're very young but you know, but that also that that also just like if if Paolo doesn't start off hot, it's gonna be a long season for the Orlando Magic, and it's gonna be a long season. Well, I, for- I don't think there's much upside anyway. Just but like okay, look, look at, the, roster, look at the like, last making the playoffs. The last two number one overall picks for the Magic were Shaq and Dwight Howard. No, 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 I no, no, I know the the, the like comparatively. I mean, I don't think any of us think Paolo will ever reach those two levels. No, when at their peaks. But yes, maybe on the Lakers. Maybe on the Lakers. Oh, though. actually, they're starting centers. Uh, Wendell Carter. They got uh, Minnie Wagner. Uh, oh, Gary yeah, Harris. No of course, Killer Kel, Terrence Ross. Oh, they got they got Big Wagner and Little Wagner. They got Dan Fran, Franz, and Mo. And Mo. Oh yeah, they got Okiki, RJ Hampton. Okay, their team is just so young. That's the thing. You need you. So they need to get like, like a vet, dude. Like I, I don't care. Don't wait. Let me. They need to get like a veteran six man. 
who like not it's like a help though. No, but I'm saying like look, like look at the Suns, okay? The Suns were they have they off, but like but like over thirty. That's not like but like look 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 See? what I'm saying that's what I'm bad. saying what I'm saying though is like the Suns were a borderline playoff team like maybe get eliminated in the first round then they got and they were very young then they got Chris Paul and Chris Paul just kind of mentored all of them no I agree he helped and out like they, so if, if they can get that kind of thing for he the Magic so or much. or even for OKC by the way like that is a huge step if yeah, OKC no, like now Paul. I don't really think any of those teams are in like compete mode and I think they no. don't know that but no if OKC I were them I wouldn't want a lot to. of cap room so what if I Kevin honestly Durant, think- what if Kevin Durant decides to write things what if he decides to to the write things right? Come back, goes back to OKC. It probably would that, be. They might. That, they might. They might be some favorites. Oh now, my God. now this is the thing. Now, uh, we'll uh, okay. Actually, we'll save the free agency later. I don't want to get off topic, but okay, save the Kevin Durant thing. Uh, real quick, last thing I want to say: the Sacramento Kings are just the Sacramento Kings, and they will always screw up the draft pick. They will always mess up. And they messed up again. I don't care if you have De'Aaron Fox on your team. You don't pass on Jaden Ivey. You don't. And they pass on Ivey and they take Keegan Murray, Iowa, who I love. I'm a big 10 boy, okay? I love Keegan Murray. But Jaden Ivey is also a big 10 Purdue boy, okay? And Jaden Ivey's about to destroy it on the Pistons. I love the young Pistons core. I think a lot of people who played 2K, because everyone was the number one pick, we were all on the Pistons last year for my career. And we all know that Sadiq Bay is a baller, okay? We all know that, all right? So Sadiq, Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, I like the young, th- uh, they got rid of uh, uh, Jeremy Grant. They just traded him to the Blazers. Um, yeah. But... Still, I like the young core. I like that of the Pistons. Look, yeah, I, I think that the Pistons, all Detroit teams have like a grit to them. Like, like it's just kind of the way they are. No, like yeah, the you need, yes, they are gritty on defense. We all know the Pistons. Um, but one sneaky pick that I think might end up being just really good is Ty Ty Washington to the Grizzlies. I think at pick 27. Yeah, I was kind of shocked Ty Ty dropped that much. Because, uh, look, you're, you're pairing him now. Him and Ja are going to uh, be starting. Zane. Those are going to be your starting point guard and shooting learn, guard. He gets to learn behind, and Bane's a baller, okay? So yeah. he gets to learn behind Ja. I don't need to debate that. We all know how good we all know how good Ja is, but he's learning behind Ja and Bane. Ty Ty, I think it's just a steal at that slot. They, they got him so late in the first round. Uh, I think, hey, like, who knows? We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll see how he develops. Uh, okay. Uh, I, think- I have one last thing uh, I wanted to say, but you have anything else? For no, me? I think uh, we can go to general NBA once you get that. Okay, yeah. Okay, actually two things. I love what the Cavs pick. They get uh, a Baji, uh out of Kansas. So they got Sexton, they got Darius Garland, they got a Baji, and then of course, they had to get big Mobley. They drafted Isaiah Mobley late second round. Pair him with his little brother, Evan, who they took number three overall last year. Had to get that brother connection back. Respect Cavs for that. Uh, yeah, that's all I have in uh, Cleveland. And then uh, last thing I want to say, Malachi Branham, number 20 of the Spurs out of Ohio State. He stepped up progressively throughout the season and got significantly better, improved so much game by game. Malachi Branham, Greg Popovich just got himself. Uh, maybe, maybe Greg wants to coach another five years with Malachi, but they got him. Uh, they got Deontay Murray. Uh, I mean, I could trade it though. Yeah, but I, I just think Malachi is a great pick for the Spurs. I love that pick for the Spurs. Uh, that's yeah. all I got on the draft though. But okay, let's go free agency. I want to get right back on that topic John Wall. Uh, of potential of uh, not John Wall. I want to okay. do the KD Kyrie real quick. Okay, so Kyrie has re-signed with the Brooklyn Nets. Well, uh, he, 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 oh, he didn't but, re-sign. He opted in. Yeah, he opted in. Uh, but but uh, he still 
can potentially be like sign and traded somewhere. Uh, if well, the- that were to happen, I'm not saying he's going to the Lakers. Let's just say the Nets are breaking up and KD wants out. Let's just have a little fun here, okay? Yeah. These are the two options that I think would be the most fun realistic shot of either of them i'd say if he was going to leave brooklyn i'd give either one of these teams i'd say like 30 40 percent chance to go to one of these two teams okay Okay. so first okc goes back he writes uh he he makes a makes his wrongs right you know he he goes back to okc and he tries to win a ship for them regardless if he wins or not he can he can you know regain a little bit of uh, respect from uh, the NBA. You know, he gained a little bit of respect from everyone for calling him a snake and dipping. But speaking of snakes, what if Kevin Durant said screw it and went back to Golden State? I think it'd be the funniest move in the history of the NBA. Like, I think it would actually be maybe the most funny thing on earth if he signed, if he reposted the exact same my next chapter just the yes. exact same Gold State. i would cry like he actually might become my Dude, favorite if, player if i'm steph team. curry though if i'm steph curry i don't want katie coming back to my team though like i just find it like obviously i can get more rings but 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 hear me out hear me out hear me out if i'm looking for my legacy and the whole knock that everybody's been having is i've been winning my chips because of kd well, being my team, is, having a if, super team because he just did it I think if I think people still knock him. More, I think if you just three peated one two more straight with KD, people would be like, "Fair, Kate, yeah, Steph's top." He would have six rings. So I, yeah, I think people would be like, "Okay." <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think people would be like, "Well, KD would definitely be top five, which I hate to say, but he would be, which is crazy to think about. I think he like. Okay, here's my question. I think though. Kevin Durant would bust '90s players' ass if he played in that era, but. Well, here's, here's my question though. Because that's if, how we rank them. If we go back, if we go back in NBA history right now, and KD never joins the Golden State Warriors, I still think that the Warriors are making the final. They may not be winning as much, but they're still making the finals. Now, that's what like I yeah, mean. Yeah, I think the Cavs might have nabbed. I think Golden State would have won another, and maybe the Cavs would have. I think it might. The Cavs been probably would have pulled off. It would have been two and, and then two. Kyrie would have still dipped. Uh, still oh. would have dipped, and then the Warriors would have destroyed them last year. Uh, but yeah, it would have been a three-two uh, exchange. But yeah, I, but I mean, they still would have made it. So KD obviously makes them a super team, and that's why they they won and almost three peated. But they also, like they they just they probably still would have been fine without him. So that I think that also attests. No, yeah, no, no, I, legacy they, they though, won too. seventy-three games the, the season before. Yeah, I think that still that that attests to, to Steph's legacy pretty too. Good. No, 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 I'm just um, saying, yeah, yeah, okay, but okay, you know, so I, fair. I had uh, a, I had a little, I had a little, uh, a little thing that I just found is from Ballsack Sports, so it's not credible whatsoever. What do you mean? That's the most credible source on the internet. Well, it about. it fooled Stephen A. Smith, so you know what? I think it counts as credible. Ballsack's kind of on a roll. Uh, like they they're tearing been it up. A lot of blue checks recently. They have been yeah. showing a lot. So, there, so I'm gonna read this to you because I, I don't think you've seen this tweet. Not sure if I have. Okay, so their tweet goes, the relationship between Kyrie Irving and Steve Nash is, quote, irreparable. Bullsack Sports tells at Windhorse ESPN, Our Irving and Nash got into a, a, a late March incident where, quote, Irving asked if he could see Kobe's MVP trophies during team dinner in Nash's home. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so good. Like, dude, I, I thought that that was absolutely just hilarious. <laughs> Kobe's MVP trophy. They, they, they should be his MVP They should be Kobe's MVP trophy. trophy. And that should be an attest to, to why Kobe's top three all the time. But you know what? Yeah. Not Unfortunately, everybody agrees. MVP comes down to narrative. And when you're Kobe or LeBron James, you have to go above and beyond of what you're expected to do to win it. So, yeah. Well, not LeBron um, James. We're just going to give him to you. LeBron does not get MVPs handed to him. No, he does not recently yeah that's probably true he like lebron james has been the best basketball player for like literally the past like 15 years okay like probably more than that at this point I, like lebron like the fact he he has 
am I? He has four okay. MVPs. Should be way more, but all right, whatever. Yeah, Last thing I want to say. I got, John I got, we Wall, gotta get a John Wall. Yeah, John, yeah Wall. John Wall out of the Rockets, joining the Clippers. One thing I just want to say, we're going to play a, a, a quick little ranking game. Maybe we played this already. I actually think we already did, so I'm not going to play it. John Wall is seventh all time in assists per game, uh, career stats. He's ahead yeah. of Jason Kidd and Steve Nash in assists per game. And I can understand, yeah, they pass more in this era, yada, yada, yada. Regardless. What, what? He's he, seventh he, all time in assists per game. Okay. I think John Wall is about to start. I mean, yes, he has not played in a while, but I think John Wall is like severely like disrespected under a No, yeah, I, I agree. he's a baller. Okay. John Wall is disgusting. All right. Look, right. he's he's a little old and and the Clippers might have just Westbricked themselves. The Clippers might have just Westbricked themselves, but on a much lower salary. No, no, no. no With no, that no. said, let me finish. Westbrook takes mid-range jump shots and doesn't even hit the back. And I don't, I don't, I don't. John Wall won't do that. John Wall does know that Russell he's just. Russell Westbrook different. literally can't even shoot. But like, look, I think, <laughs> I think, I think the Los Angeles Clippers are the best team in LA right now, which sucks to yeah. say, but I think they are that for team, sure like, the best team. Healthy. In LA. We'll see if and they just I mean Kawhi Kawhi didn't play this entire year. He's about to come back hundred percent. Paul George actually played Maybe very well last year. 100%. We'll see. We'll see. Comparatively to how he was before when it was load management left and right. I think there's gonna be a little less load management this year. Ivan Zubak also re-signed uh for 33 mil, I think it was. Yeah, uh, and like they have Kennard on a ton of money. Kawhi and Paul George both make 39. But yeah. he's got John Wall in like a min. So like that's why they were able to get John. They're looking Wall. good. They're looking good comparatively yeah. to to Westbrook, Glassman, and LeBron. Yeah. 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 I'm we'll see how the Lakers do. Go Lakers, baby. Go Lake Show. Uh Lake Show. but okay, you got anything else on NBA? Yeah. Um reportedly the Charlotte Hornets are not offering Miles Bridges a max contract. Now, the thing is, Miles Bridges, let, let me look up Miles Bridges real quick. Now, I like, wonder I'll be if honest, this has I don't anything to do with, with his, with his uh, Instagram posts lately or um, his rap career taking off, might need to change industries. Who knows? So, so Bridges averaged 27 and four last he was a good year, player. which yeah. is kind of actually disgusting. Um, no, he's good. But the thing is, like, actually, the way the NBA contracts work nowadays, like these players are just making bags that are crazy. Like I've never seen. No, Shaq was pissed that Rudy Gobert. Random players like just getting bags like this. And now Miles Bridges doesn't seem like a max player to me. Uh, well, isn't Max? Isn't Max always kind of isolated to the player themselves? Like it's yeah, not yeah. I, I think it. Yeah, uh, it is dependent. Actually, okay, so maybe like for his value, maybe his max is, deserve is it after like that last season. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no, the rumors already wants to go to uh, to Detroit, go to the Pistons. Uh, apparently, he can pursue his rap career further in Detroit. Uh, so you know, Miles might be looking for uh, avenues outside of the NBA. Uh, he's trying to walk in the footsteps of Eminem right now. Yeah, he's he's. <laughs> I like that. Uh, he's, he's doing things, you know, uh, he's looking off the court, looking for things, uh, off the outside of the gym, seeing, uh, how else he can increase his uh, brand and image, you know, and, you know, shout miles bridges power to you. Brother. Also, I think Salute it was, emoji. Two, I think it was, uh, what, two episodes ago that Chad said he'd listened to miles bridges raps and he said that they were pretty gas. They, they actually are good. No, no, I, 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 good I, I listened to one today and I think it might've been one of the worst things that I've heard in my life. Oh, wow. Uh, so. Well, you also don't listen to rap at all. So you have I don't, I'm not a big, I'm not a big rap person, but like, no, I'll you aren't a rap person at all. Uh, so, you know, we don't value your opinion when it comes to rap on this pod. We don't. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Might have just been the song that I was listening to. But I'm I mean, just, I don't know. I think you just have a bad taste in music. I think Miles Bridges is no, amazing. I'm, outside of that, have the exact same taste in music. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm when it comes to rap. Me, no, outside of that opposite spectrums. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about uh, 
a little disco disco but uh i'm just saying when it comes to rap like no no i have no idea what i'm same doing way. in that category so your opinion's discredited uh all right you got anything else nba uh i got nothing uh, yeah. else yeah the, uh, the top two highest players in the nba play uh next season go top two what do you think they are who do you think they are top two what best players highest paid nba players oh i year. saw this already it's uh like steph and then i think it's like a tie between harden and no i think it was john wall it the two highest paid nba players next year are steph curry and directly following him russell westbrook oh no the la lakers have have are holding the second highest paid contract on their team and it's not he's LeBron. not even a top 10 player on their team <laughs> like my god um it's not great business that is not great business uh yeah okay i have a little transition segment for us uh between the nba and the nfl if you want to get in the nfl next um oh i i always love ending it off because that's the most juice but we could we could do that little, now little sandwich yeah i think this 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 is a pretty good transition i think so this is a little would you rather segment we got here. Okay. And okay. this is with everything on the line, win or go home. Would you rather have Russell Westbrook take the win or go home game winning shot to go to the NBA finals or have Blair Walsh or Cody Parkey take a chip shot field goal to go to the Super Bowl? Uh statistically we're gonna have to go with the chip shot i that's what i'm thinking the chip like shot. that's actually a no-brainer uh <laughs> well russell westbrook is also a guaranteed miss so of course we're taking the kick that you got like well blair walsh and cody parkey you got probably a 40 percent chance of that kick going in no, but it's go, better than the zero yeah it's better than down. the zero it's, of like, russell. it's like it's like 30 percent chance <laughs> the vikings fan i've been yeah. in my life Something, yeah i mean i yeah. We're you know, I vividly, yeah. I vividly remember that game. I think that might have been the most upset I have ever been from a sporting event in my entire life. I was sitting that hurts. alone. That one hurts. Yeah. I was sitting alone in my parents' room watching it on their TV. Just sobbing. And, and don't, don't forget, it was like negative 15 degrees Just outside. Crying in a pillow. And, and I had never seen the Vikings. Like this was the first time I had actively like really like when I was like diehard Vikings fan, like seeing them get to the playoffs. Cause I wasn't like that big into them in 2009 when they, they made it to the um, uh, conference, like to go to the, go to the uh, Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So I was sitting there watching it and I saw Blair Walsh and I'm like, this is good. Cause Blair Walsh had been like the best kicker in the NFL that year. And then I saw it go to the left. And what? then I proceeded. I, why left? Um, Iconic moments. But uh, I proceeded to throw multiple pillows into the wall and sob onto my knees. That's what you did to me, Blair Walsh. Yeah, Blair Walsh is evil to Minnesota Vikings fans. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Uh, One thing I I got in the NFL. uh, Today, Terry McLaurin uh, signed a three-year, $71 million deal with the Washington Commanders. Uh, I think that makes him, like, one of the highest paid wide receivers on a per year basis in NFL history. Uh, But Terry also just received the largest signing bonus for a wide receiver in NFL history, $28 million signing bonus. So Terry McLaurin, my man, that was a third round draft pick, by the way, out of Ohio state, Uh, Brian Hartline player. Uh, If Jamison Williams is an Alabama player, then, uh, Terry McLaurin counts as a Brian Hartline player too. So yeah, right now the Ohio State recruiting pitch is through the roof. Um, through the roof right now. Mikey T's contract. Let me remind you how much money that guy has. Uh, but yeah, uh, shout out Ohio State. Ohio State wide receivers right now. Business is booming, baby. The, booming uh, right now. the first thing with that that I want to say is a uh, pray for the Vikings cap space next year when oh, just yeah. becomes a free agent. Gee, they're going to have to Rob cut. Brzezinski, who is the, uh, who's the president or vice president of football operations for the uh, Vikings. Justin Jefferson will be the highest paid wide receiver in NFL history when he gets his cost, yeah. literally. Rob, Rob Brzezinski, like he's got a, he's got a handful for him. He always finds a way. So, so hell or high water, 
Justin Jefferson will be a Viking for a long time in the future, but he might actually take up 95% of the cap Randy space. wasn't, but hopefully this time. We don't we'll do it right this time. Stay. Stefan wasn't either, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, Imagine Stephon just, also it just wouldn't, blossomed when he left. I hate to say it. it. <laughs> look, it would not, it would, it would not have happened without trading Stefan. But imagine a Vikings team that had Adam Thielen, Stefan Diggs, and Justin Jefferson. Just imagine what that would do. In my opinion, if that were to happen, maybe Justin Jefferson isn't quite the star that we look. No, at he's not because he's he's know? probably buried on the depth. He might he might take over Adam Thielen's spot. Though. I still like I think Loki. Maybe all three of those guys could potentially get a thousand yard seasons, but like. Maybe maybe not Thielen actually when it comes to that group, but uh, did no. he even have one last year? Um, I know he had a lot of touchdowns. I'm not I'm not sure yards wise, but could be wrong. I, I think could be egregiously wrong on that one. But yeah, he was just shy. He was at 726. I think he got no, maybe he played the full year. I think he got hurt for a little bit though. Yeah, uh, no, ten no. touchdowns. Yeah, he had a lot of touchdowns. one rush for two yards. Solid. The year before that, 925. And then his last 1,000-yard receiving season was in 2018. Oh, bit of a fall off for Thielen. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, getting a little old. So, but we want him to retire as a Viking. Yeah, Justin Jefferson's about to get a bag, though. Actually, now that you say Yeah, this, no, uh, please, please pray for the Vikings cap space managers because they will be up night and day haunted by doing whatever it takes to get him back. No, he's on the team you cannot let him go uh <laughs> sweet lord yeah um okay so this next bit that i had unless you have something else you want to go with no um, hit me hit me with anything the nfl today tweeted out a post that said there are plenty of wide receiver duos that are ready to take the lead guy storm next year do the eagles have the best duo so Devonte smith and aj brown they follow that with a picture of Devontae and Hen- uh, Hunter Renfro, Tyreek and, and Waddle, Cooper Both Cup better. and Allen Robinson and Mikey T. Jarvis, all of them better. You know who <laughs> else? You know who else the NFL didn't the list Bucks? that Godwin, that are better than Mike than Evans? the Eagles and AJ Brown? Uh, Chargers, Mike Keenan Mike Allen, Evans Michael. and Keenan Allen. Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. You could even throw what KJ Osborne. What is going on? Like, what? What? Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Justin, <laughs> sorry, Jamar, Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. T. Higgins. Like, dude, I think even the Packers, like, third string receivers that are about to start next no, year. No, no, no. All right. No, that's a little far. No, but Amon Ra and whoever that secondary receiver for, for the Charles time. slash JMO, maybe. Yeah, probably better. Uh, Christian Kirk and... Um, Marvin Jones Jr. or not Marvin Jones Jr. Um, you don't think so? No, not that one. <laughs> no, what about not, Darnell not Mooney and uh no, not that one either. No. Not better than Seahawks, Metcalf Garrett, Lockett. Definitely not better than Metcalf Lockett. What are they saying? Garrett Wilson and and Corey Davis. Yeah, I low key think that they're better. The, the Corey Davis and, and and Garrett Wilson are better than them. Could be. Could be. Uh, AJ Lamb. Mass. I I just think because they're on the Eagles, they're not going to perform very well. They don't pass. They run. You can't. You can't have NFL. What are you doing? Like we all know that the Eagles receivers don't have hands. So why even make it a debate that they are the top duo? Like that's I'm disgraceful to that. all the other teams in the NFL. Yeah, like that's just like a, an interaction post. You know, kind of smart on them, but that was smart just the numbies. Uh. Yeah, yeah, that's what I gotta say about that. Um, yeah, no. Also, uh, fun fact: Mike Evans is younger than Cooper Cup. Yeah, that's just like very, very neat and interesting to find out. You you wouldn't think that. You definitely wouldn't assume that. But I think Cooper Cup was twenty four when he was a rookie. Like that's. I think he was a fifth year out of out of college I, I could be wrong but i think he was old when he got drafted no he definitely was because he, he had taken a couple of years but it's just crazy that i think mike evans had been in the league for like three to four years before that and like i think of mike like evans as like a bona fide veteran like he's like kind of old like reaching kind of towards the 
the end of his little peak here. And he's going to start going down. Everybody's taking Cooper Cups on this upward trend, but Cooper Cups like 29 right now. Yeah, no, like he is pretty old, you know? And so like that's why he had to, that's why he had to get his bag uh, this offseason. He did just catch the his bag. Wide receiver bags have been hilarious this offseason. Just like the amount of money just being thrown around to the receivers. Uh, that's Dude, what I don't know how they be a receiver or a quarterback or I a don't know how or a corner. One of those. Just don't be a running back. Don't be a running back or a middle linebacker. You could be an outside linebacker, but no middle. But like also like, dude, I don't know how the NFL is going to catch up with this cap space because COVID took it down. And now since quarterbacks and receivers are basically going to take up like two thirds of the cap, like, no, like legitimately (laughs) what's we're about to have USFL teams, like filling up the rest of the roster. No, I mean, but it's like so many dudes just signed for not like Van Noy's on minute. Like so many older guys are just on minimums and it's like, the NFL also, uh, you only need to be under the salary cap for one day. Apparently, there's only one day. Really? Apparently, like the rest of it, you can be over. Yeah, I that does that make that kind of does make sense because a lot of teams just like like if you're watching the them. Saints, like, remember? Didn't 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 um like the Saints? We were like, what the hell? Like, don't they literally don't have money or something? Like, how are they? Didn't, how are they uh, didn't Taysom Hill like sign a $120 million contract or something like that, like last year, two years ago? And we're like, one, we're like, what the hell are you doing, Saints? Like, what? And two, they like changed it two days later to like, like, there's always some weird structuring in the contracts that make you able to like get underneath there's the cap. There's so many like little clauses in there, I feel like, where they can just like casually just be like, uh, if this, you only get. Two hundred thousand dollars, and it's like there's just weird ass clauses. I don't even understand. Apparently, the Saints also have team options every year where they can cut him, and they don't owe him any money though. I do know that. I'm pretty really. Sure. They, they, That's they interesting. It, it's a team option contract where Taysom Hill still, still needs to like perform to earn the money. Yeah, but well, he's no longer on the team, so. Oh well, he's, he's not he's getting that money. Team. Uh, well, um, that solves the answer for you. Okay. Rip taste. Yeah, I don't. Maybe he's a on a mission. Emoji. Throw it in. Might the be the greatest, best emoji of all. Literally time. Literally the greatest emoji. Like shout out Apple on that. That was phenomenal. This. It only took them like twelve years, but we finally got it. Yeah, it took them a while, but you know what? It's here now. You know. Uh, okay. Do you have any more NFL? Yeah, Does I got one. See? Okay. Okay. Um. So I was just scrolling through Twitter the other day. And I stumbled upon this post about Adrian Peterson. Well, obviously, so Adrian Peterson's about to box Le'Veon Bell, by the way. So yeah. Le'Veon Bell's about to get his shit rocked. Uh, yeah. Also, I just want to say, shout out Adrian Peterson. You're finally allowed to hit someone legally. Oh, oh boy. Um, but what people never talk about is how AP was five yards short of breaking the all-time rushing record a year after just obliterating his ACL. Yeah. And he, one MVP. A, like, he is, he dude. is, he's definitely on the uh, all time running back Mount Rushmore without question. He, I think he's, he's the best running back of the last, I don't know, 15 years. When, more, more when did he start? That. When did he start playing? Uh, 2008. Yeah, that's like 15. Yeah. That's like I, that's 15 years. I'm, I'm biased, but I think he's the top three running back of all time. I would agree. I think, I think he's disgusting. Like, like who off of torn ACL and doing that is dude. There's unheard. no other no other player in NFL history has done that. The last player to do that, we're, we're not going to count Derrick Henry coming back. I don't know if Derrick Henry hurt himself. Yeah. Well, I think JJ Watt tore his pectoral a couple of seasons ago or yeah. something it, like it's that. Just, the thing back. is, longevity is like the number one thing when it comes to like it's, really AP still back. going it's AP. He's still going. AP. He was on the Lions last year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did. I thought he retired. What? No, he's still going, dude. He wants to play until he's 40. Okay, so, all right. So, AP, he's a, a without doubt Hall of Fame gold jacket. AP is okay. essentially Tom Brady, except not Tom Brady. He just can't get on any teams. Tom Brady will get on a team until he decides to – until he dies, essentially. AP, AP should probably – Whatever diet he's on is, I don't know if it's the TV 12 diet, but he should get that out there because he's still going and, and he's a running back too. So you really shouldn't be going when you're like 36. If Frank Gore just retired. Like, like that, that to be I honest, mean, Adrian Peterson might be like, well, 
going back, it, you you could draft running backs and they could actually like last long. But like Adrian Pearson might have been like one of the last first round running back picks to like actually truly be worth the first round pick and play like 10 seasons in the NFL. Like, yeah, everybody thought that that's what Saquon would be and that didn't really happen. Like when I look at like, I'm trying to think of other like massive name running backs. Uh, Zeke coming out. Kind of that, like Zeke. Well, we'll see. Like Zeke, Zeke's. Zeke. Christian McCaffrey coming out was kind of like that. Dalvin Cook. Leonard Fournette was really like that when you because yeah, he was getting AP comparisons. Didn't, didn't Leonard Fournette go like five? He went. I think CMC went I first. Then it was like Leonard. And then Dalvin fell to the second round because the Vikings didn't have a first round pick that year because they traded for Sam Bradford. Wasn't Dalvin hurt his last year in college though? Isn't that why he fell? Or I think it was character issues, off the field issues. Oh, okay. All right. Well, they fixed that in Minnesota. Uh, Yeah. uh, Uh, Well, minus uh, an incident, I think it was last year. But yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll just throw that one under the bus. Nothing happened there. Okay, if you have nothing else NFL, I really want to get into some. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm good. Okay, uh, college football, and by college football, I mean Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State lands four-star quarterback prospect who decommitted from Georgia. Uh, I think I'm getting this right, Kyan Lee. Uh, okay. Now, if I was a really, really great editor, I would put in his highlight tape right here. We'll see if I do that or not. Uh, Probably but not. But he, this guy just lays the hammer on it. like this guy hits so hard as a quarterback like, corner and he's oh, okay. corner corner and he's just yeah. spearing dudes i'm like okay who is this guy he was a georgia commit decommitted now to ohio state apparently this was ohio state's number one corner target for the class of 2023 that's um, saying a lot uh now another thing uh shout out depressed ginger uh ohio state is close to flipping four-star cornerback Calvin Simpson Hunt from Texas Tech. Hashtag free CSH. He apparently has been kidnapped by the Texas Tech coaching staff. Hashtag free CSH. Uh, Let's get him to Ohio State soon, boys. Let's get him to Ohio State. He has been kidnapped by the Texas Tech coaching staff. Uh, Shout out to Press Ginger. Uh, and in some other news, Ohio State is rumored to cop five-star DN Mateo Uiungagale, who is DJ Uiungagale, Clemson <laughs> quarterback's little brother, five-star DN out of St. John Bosco. He's a DN? Yes, DN. They got some uh, genes in that family. Yeah, his dad is massive. Big Dave Uiungagale, look him up on Twitter. He has like 20K followers on Twitter too. He's hilarious on Twitter, love him. Uh, but also rumored to get four-star DN Jason Moore from DeMatha, which is where Chase Young went to high school. So another DN out of there. Eh, that could be pretty good uh, for uh, Ohio State. And then they're also rumored to pick up another top 100 prospect, four star D tackle John Walker, who is 310 pounds as a junior in high school. So we would love that at Ohio State. Uh, but yeah. Uh, you you said you got one, one thing you want. Yeah, to say? I got I got, I got one one more last take for college football, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm we're a little jumping back a little bit because I forgot I hit this last week. I'm pretty sure. Um, the 1998 Vikings would absolutely demolish the league if they were a team right now in the NFL. Now the 1998 Vikings, the 15 and one team, Randy Moss rookie year, uh, ran uh Cunningham, Randall Cunningham at quarterback, who's a running back. Uh, Robert Smith, who actually is a, he was like one of the better Vikings running backs at the time. Okay. So, and then uh, also don't forget Chris Carter was on the team. And then on that defense, uh, I, I, I honestly don't. The, uh, the defense have, my head. has, uh, <laughs> I don't think I know anyone. you know, they're not like, they're probably very notable players, but I, was about to I say Jared Allen, I'm like, there's no way he played. Back. Oh, he's like 2006, <laughs> 2006, I think is when they got him. They have John Randall. That's the biggest name on the on the defense. Okay. They have John Randall. No, I but, mean, like honestly, like that offense would go crazy right now. I'm dude, not, I mean, like go crazy. I I think I think that they would easily manhandle the entire NFL right now. Now I'm not sure about manhandle, but their offense could definitely Look, rack up points. We had the, the, Randall Cunningham had three thousand pass three thousand seven hundred passing yards, a completion percentage of sixty one percent, thirty four touchdowns. Which uh, would be mid 
in the NFL. 10, 10 interceptions. But the big thing is that he had, uh, let's see, where's his rushing at here? Uh, 132 yards, 32 attempts, one touchdown. So not really an X factor on the ground. Uh, Robert Smith percent completion percentage. 30, oh, that's pretty good damn. though. Did he like? Damn, he must have been. He got like hurt. A lot in between. He did get hurt. Okay. Brad Johnson was a pretty good He's quarterback so too, games though. In between these years. Um. Well, he was 35, but Robert Smith, 1,200 rushing yards. Um. Chris Carter. A thousand receiving yards. Randy Moss, a thousand moves in overtime to Falcons in the NFC Championship. They had ten Pro Bowlers that year. Five AP All Pros. I mean, Gary Anderson also eleven for eleven, nine for nine. Like, I mean, twelve for twelve, or like two for two for like. Good team. Now I'm not sure if they'd be running the NFL, but I think they would. Probably be definitely top half of the league, hundred p. I think I think that they'd be they'd be more than that. If you just honest. replace the current Vikings team with that one, like they would definitely win the NFC North. Uh, they, I would still say they'd win the NFC at a minimum. Maybe not, maybe not take the bull, but they. Well, I they, mean, in my opinion, Tom Brady is about to retire next year, so obviously he's going out with a ring. NFL scripted, duh. So like, obviously the Bucks are winning next year, like, duh. Like, don't – like, come on, wake up, people. Duh, obviously Brady's going to win. But maybe, maybe maybe the Vikings would be able to get by that, uh, the Brady curse. Uh, and not really curse, yeah. but it's just rigged for him. I can – I'm so positive the Bucks are going to win the Super Bowl next year. It, really? Just, You're that positive? Yeah. I, I just think it's, it's just meant to be. It, that's just how it works. And Gronk will come out of retirement, like, like week 12. And then, you know, that like he's probably just resting there. right now. Like, honestly, he'll just come back later. There's probably some, like, there's probably some, like, cap space thing where they, they if they bring on Gronk half through the year, it's fine. And Gronk's like, I don't even want to play the first eight games. And they're like, we know you don't. So just come on second half of the year, you know? Gronk, Gronk, Gronk may want to gamble on some of the games, too. Like, who knows? No, he doesn't yeah, want to get that like Calvin Ridley suspension. Right now. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, th- th- that's what I'm looking at, you know? I think that could happen. Okay. Uh, last thing I just or, or last thing football related I want to say since Arch Manning has committed to Texas, Texas has landed eight high school recruits. Eight, I think Arch committed like six days ago at the time we're recording this. Uh, by the time this video comes out, it'll probably be like 12. Who knows? But uh, just looking through the list, they have a five star safety committed and then a bunch of like three stars and then uh, when we uh, look at Ohio State recruiting standards, uh, just a bunch of irrelevant guys is who Texas signed other than the five-star. But, hey, they just got eight players. I'm still sticking by Texas has not proved anything yet off their recruiting until no. they win something. I don't care. Texas is not back yet. Recruiting-wise, they're back. Uh, let's see how it'll – I mean, they only got a couple seasons left in the Big 12 before they got to start playing with the big boys in the SEC. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, that, that's all I got on football, though um yeah 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 that 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 sounds about right uh let's wrap up with the mlb uh one middle little mid uh sectionary thing is uh the last team to three peat was the la lakers in 2000 2002 tampa bay lightning could have done that this year uh they did not so it just goes to show you how hard it is to i think i just th- so like the Lightning could have done it. I think the war the Warriors could have done it. Uh, have done it. Uh, the Pats could have done it. I think yeah, Pats could have done it. The Heat, I'm pretty sure, also could have done it with could've LeBron. Uh, the Lakers were almost about. Lakers to Lakers could have done it bit. again with. Yeah. They lost the Celtics that finals before, then beat the Celtics, then beat the Magic. So like they could have done it. It's just it's very hard to three peat. The last three peat was the Dodgers could have done it. 99, they, didn't, 2000. they didn't lose the two the two World Series before the one they won, or was it they got eliminated before? No, they, no, no. They they, they weren't won. on a three peat track. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like three peating is just so hard. And I mean, I like that's like like going back to the goat debate the other week. Like MJ three peated twice and won Finals MVP in all of the series. So I mean, like that's the most goaded stat line ever like ever uh i also just want to point out though i'm pretty sure i saw like betting lines i think the bulls were like literally like 
minus 600 to minus 1200 odds for all of those series. So yeah, I just want to say like Michael Jordan literally played against plumbers, like literally played (laughs) against plumbers. Like, are you kidding me? Like what? Odds like that for the NBA finals? Are you kidding me? That's absolutely unheard of. Against firefighters. Okay. Uh, And he also just played on like one of the most stacked teams ever. Like he had a big three before that was a thing. Like Scotty Pippen, Dennis Rodman. Rodman, like Kerr was on there. I don't know. He's a good three point shooter then. He was a good three point shooter, at least. I'm just saying, like, like no, 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 no. I'm saying like they had pieces all around. Like who coaches out here balling? Like they had pieces everywhere, and people are acting like MJ carried the team by himself on his shoulders. Shut up! Shut up! He played against plumbers. It's not that hard to win NBA title when you're playing against firefighters. That's how Bill Russell won like 15 in a row. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's that's all I got on that though. But okay, let's get to MLB. Yeah, uh, one thing to say about more. MLB: Freddie Freeman today fired his agent after an emotional weekend series in Atlanta, where Freddie like publicly expressed, like let everyone know, like yeah, I wanted to play for Atlanta. That was the only team I wanted to re-sign with, and. I'm going to be honest, my instant reaction to finding I just fired his agent, I'm like, is this dude about to force his way back to Atlanta? I'm like, is he about to, like, pull a Kawhi with the Spurs and just sit out? But no, no, Freddie didn't do it. Freddie came out and said, um, I, I'm going to twist the words here. It's, it's like a breakup. You know, he's in the healing process right now. You know, uh, I, think that's what he, I think that's what he came out and said. Uh, somewhat paraphrase. He said he's he's here for the next the five years. And he's he's going to win. I mean, the goal is to win chips with the Lakers or the Dodgers. Dodgers. Gonna do. Yeah, baseball, not soccer. Kemp knows, not, not basketball. Yeah, but yeah, that's what Freddie said. And you know what? I can take that out of Freddie. Look, just, just like a message to all other Dodger fans, like, just chill. Like, Freddie's from SoCal. Like, there, he's not going to leave. The media likes twisting things. Like, there's absolutely no reason to be upset to be to be upset with with freddie or to worry about that and let's say hypothetically he does force his way to to atlanta in return you're gonna get matt olsen and i don't know who yeah you know what what? it's gonna be a pretty good deal if you were gonna be good probably a zoo (laughs) no we're taking michael harris a second though 100 percent. that guy was disgusting over the weekend um Uh, yeah that's all i got mlb though okay i got it um so uh, I came across this uh, little infographic uh, earlier today. Okay. This is a list of all of the p- uh, pitchers that the Pirates have traded away recently since 2015. Oh, great list. Since 2015, the Pirates have traded away Charlie Morton, Garrett Cole, Tyler Glasnow, Shane Baz, Joe Musgrove, Jameson Talon, Talon, and Clay Holmes. Greatest pitching developers in the history of the MLB. Other imagine, than Dodgers, uh, but yeah, Jesus. Imagine a bullpen that had all of them. You wouldn't be able to sign all of them, obviously. Or just like a, like rota- or a rotation. Or starters, but like all, so many of those guys are dominant right now. Like, not the best pitcher in the MLB right though, because like, the best pitcher in the MLB right now is uh, Tony Gonsolin still. But just saying, you know, like I, I as much as I want to say it is, he ain't. I love me some Tony. Lowest a lowest ERA still. So. Yes, yes, no, 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 I know. I, I just know he's about to implode the second he <laughs> offs it. I just know it'll happen. So you know, I love what he's doing now, uh, but. I just know it's going to come with him. I know it's going to happen, so I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm not, I'm not expecting him to, to carry this uh, momentum throughout the whole season. I'm expecting him to finish the year with like a 2-8, you know. But well, My question is, do you think uh, – do you, do you see playoff Kershaw coming back or like a – Hopefully we... not. Hopefully we see a, a new playoff Kershaw, uh, one that wins. Uh, that would be ideal. That would be ideal. Uh, I mean, Walker's been the postseason guy – 
he's hurt right now. I doubt he'll be the same when he comes back this year. No, it's got me a little worried. So. I also fully, by the way. Pitching concerns. Pitching concerns. Obviously, the line has been so weird. Dave is rolling out the worst lineups in the history of the MLB, but. Craig Kimbrell. You might be the worst reliever that the MLB has seen in, like, the last 25 years. I would rather have Bruce Starr, Gratterall, relieving every single game for the rest of the entire season. Then see you touch yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the field like, one more time. I don't think that guy's had a clean inning this season. No, every single and inning. I was, I, at first I was like, you know what? I'll be patient with him. He'll settle in eventually. No, he'll never settle in. He's like, actually like, give me Kenley back, please. And I know Kenley just blew a save uh, on Dude, Sunday I'll take, night, I'll take Kenley, Kenley back. Kenley, Kenley's on the aisle right now with an irregular heartbeat. I'll take Kenley with an irregular heartbeat over Craig Campbell. Yeah, and he had that a regular heartbeat in LA. Like I swear. I mean, I'm just speculating. Dude, I honestly the think second it, that irregular heartbeat happened was when fans started turning on him. That that's like dude, I, 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 I'm just being, uh, I'm just saying, like he did not have that 2017. I so honestly like 2019. I honestly think I'd rather have like an out of position player. Like I'd rather have Trace Thompson pitching than than Craig. Campbell. Okay, stop. All right. Dude, they, they pitch so slow. The batters just kind of whiff at it. Uh, Everett, we, we come. On, remember when we were talking about you know, what 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 is that? What is that? You'd rather have Justin Turner pitching than Craig Kimbrell? Really? You'd rather have I, Justin Turner? I didn't say someone. Justin. Turner. You'd rather have Ichiro Suzuki up there? Would yeah, you rather have Mookie Betts up there? No, no. because you probably got to take the hammer Anyone off. Anyone on the Dodgers? No. Everett, what do you say, Everett? You no. put Dave Roberts up on the pitch, uh, up on the mound? I, I wish we can put him at bat so I could throw a ball at his head as hard as I can. That's what <laughs> I wish we could do. Dave Roberts is actually rolling out the worst lineup in history today. He's batting Lux behind Hanser Alberto and Trace Thompson today. Yeah, I don't know why. want to lose? He's got a problem against Lux. And Kershaw's pitching today. Yeah, I know. And like about to burn a pitcher. I guess it's against the Rockies. I yeah, don't know. The, 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 this is just the classic stage of Dodgers fan where they just classic start playing like absolute dog. And, you know, we start complaining. It happens all the time. It's happening again. It'll never end. But yeah. I don't know the way the fandom works, though. Yeah, that's how it works. Because the Dodgers are just. Dave Roberts gives me just. Is, uh, is, Heaney, is Heaney coming back soon? Dustin May no. should be. No? No. Nope. But Dustin May. Probably not, I guess. Cool, cool. So we're <laughs> we're stuck with Probably Craig. For, we're stuck with Craig for the foreseeable future. Well, I mean, Craig's a closer. You just list a bunch of starters, brother. So I thought Dustin May plays uh, is reliever. No, brother. Uh, even though, like, he they they played him at TJ. He should do it. Well, la- well, yeah, they bring him in as a high leverage reliever in the postseason because they only have four starters in the playoffs. To be fair, to be fair, last and like, Gonsolin last year were like high leverage relievers. To be fair, like last postseason was really when I got into Dodgers baseball though. So yeah, yeah but I'm just like nah he he's a starter. May Day, he's going out there. But like who knows? Maybe they call it Bobby Miller. Maybe he can hit some playing time. We know Bobby Miller's not bad. Ball. We know Pepe has butt cheek, so don't call him up. But yeah, uh, that's a, that, that's all I got. Uh, I think that might do it. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, obviously, I think that this will be the – what day is the 4th of July? I think this will be the last episode uploaded before the 4th. Uh, yeah. The 4th is next Monday. So, uh, have an amazing 4th of July. Uh, and yeah, for, Oh, 4th of July weekend and then 4th on a Monday? Oh, my God. Just, uh, That's amazing. <laughs> That's, like, the most ideal – wow. Just make sure great not job on Earth for scheduling that one. Great Just job. Please, please, please don't blow your hand off like Jason Pierre Paul does or did. Or do. Or well, yeah, you or could. Do. Uh, it's not ideal. It's kind of cool. Yeah, if you, you if, if you want to walk around with the club on your hand like JPP does. I, I mean, JPP won a Super Bowl after he blew off his hand. I think he already had one Dude. before too. He won two. I think that one was after it. I think they both were.
the you're telling me the Giants one was at? No, that was he blew his hand off way after he was on the way after. Let's see, Justin uh, Jason Pierre-Paul. Oh yeah, he blew him off in 2015. Yeah, yeah. You only had one post uh, post hand, up, post. but yeah, I think that I'll do it. Uh, once again, everybody, uh, help your water boys out. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us five stars, whatever platform. If you're listening to us, download the podcast. Help your water boys out so we can get, uh, you know, so so we can make this a, a real thing. You know, that's what we're going for. That's what we want. Water boy out.